Wisdom is practical. Wisdom has an end result. Wisdom causes the axe to be sharper so that when you work, there's results. Wisdom brings success. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 10, the Bible says, If the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the edge, then he must use more strength. But wisdom brings success. If I had six hours to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first four hours sharpening the blade. Preparation. Many people put no preparation or planning in what they endeavor to build, and therefore they struggle in life. Other people, Christians, neglect the most important thing they can do on a daily basis, their relationship with God, and therefore they struggle along in life. There are no secrets to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failure. So we want to talk about wisdom. Wisdom. Living life the way God intends to you for you to live. Wisdom. What you need to build anything of significance in your life. Whether it's your character, your spiritual life, your marriage, your business, your church, a department, you need wisdom. Because the Bible says wisdom brings success. So many people have become dull and their lives have become boring. And so many Christians out there live a bland life like this X I have in my hand this morning. Doctors will tell you suffer, struggle with burnout and heart-related issues and relational issues and pressure, insomnia, things that go wrong in people's lives because people don't take time to sharpen the blade. If the axe is dull and one does not sharpen the axe edge, then more strength is required. But wisdom brings success. If I want to build a great marriage, I need wisdom. If I want to be a great pastor, I need wisdom. If I want to be a great architect, I need wisdom. If I want to be a great doctor, I need wisdom. Wisdom is the ability to apply knowledge. It's the ability to do the right thing at the right time. Like the rugby player in a crisis moment knowing what to do. Knowledge you can get from university. Knowledge you can get from the library. Knowledge you can acquire in books. Wisdom comes from God. God is the source of wisdom. I will show you today. The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 1 verse 30, the Bible says, Christ has been made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. If I want to succeed in life, I want to be a wise man. I want to build my life according to the pattern of God. Now, just living life causes the blade to become blunt because life is filled with obstacles and challenges. Just using the X in your life, using your gift, your talent, being a sportsman, being an actor, beautiful actors there in Pretoria, being a musician causes your life or the cutting edge or what gives you significance to become blunt. Living life, not doing anything wrong, using the X, raising your children, building that business, raising leaders can cause you to end up dull and boring and bland and beige. All work and no play makes Johnny a dull boy. Men want wives who will play with them. Men want wives who are fun. And all the brothers said, a good amen or a good hoo-ha. Sharpening the axe. People struggle in life because they don't take time to sharpen the axe. I love the program when you see the competitions on television where you see the, uh, the tree logging competition and I always watch how quickly people chop, da chop down those trees. And uh, I found out how to sharpen the axe. Number one, the axe has to be cleaned. You can't sharpen your life while there's a lot of dirt on your life. You have to get rid of the dirt. And that is the word of God. The Bible says we are cleansed through the washing of the water of the word. We have to take a bath in the Bible every day of our lives. Say a good amen. If we want to stay sharp and smart, we have to refresh ourselves and revive ourselves and wash ourselves through the word of God. The Bible says thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. The second thing is we need an instrument called a file. 
to sharpen the blade. Now the file will be the pastor that God places in your life, the person that talks into your life, and the Holy Spirit that represents God in your life. When you see how people sharpen a blade, it's never yin and fear. So it's by means of doom. Backwards and forwards. It's never, so people who run backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, they're looking for an answer. Yeah, revelation there. Never get sharp spiritually. You have to get planted somewhere. And you have to allow God to start the process of discipleship. And the blade, the edge of the blade is always filed from the inside out. Never from the outside in. People look for results on the outside and they neglect the inside. If you want great results on the outside, you have to look after the inside. As the tree withers from the outside, life comes from the inside out. You have to spend time filing the blade, time in the church, time in prayer, time in the presence of God, time in the home cell, so that God can work in your life and file you inside out. And when they file the blade, they put oil on the blade. We need the presence of God in our lives. There is no substitute for the Holy Spirit. Nothing. We need to come. Give me that Willie Biggie. Give me Willie. Give me Willie. 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 Get net over the cancer geest vandag. Willie and your lamp. We gaan eigenlijk. Kom jij weer dan? Give me Willie. Huh? Niet zo niet. We gaan hij. Willie. Wie het jelle niet? Goed. Dan zal ik maar Engels spreek. Oil. We need to get under the glory spout. We need to get under the glory spout where the anointing comes out. We need to keep ourselves in the presence of God. The Bible calls the church the dwelling place of the Holy Ghost. We need to stay in the presence of God. We need to be loved by Jesus Christ. We can never doubt the love that God has for us. We need the Holy Spirit to minister to us when we read the Bible, when we're in church and we're worshiping God. We need the Holy Spirit. We need a layer of the Holy Spirit on the outside. Because this is the seal that God gave us. This is the sign of our redemption. The Bible says you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Inwardly born again. Not circumcised of the flesh. Circumcised of the heart. You are now a child of God. Born again of the incorruptible seed of God. God starts a great work on the outside. Then God washes you every day through the word of God. Then God anoints you. The Bible says you have an anointing and you know all things. And then the axe is kept in a safe place. What is the safe place? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High, God. He that dwells in the secret place. He who spends time in the presence of God. What am I saying to you this morning? You have to look after the axe in your life. You have to look after the blade if you want to live on, on the cutting edge. If you want success in your life, you need to look after the blade. You have to sharpen the blade. If you want to build a great company, you have to take time out. To sharpen the blade. If the blade is blunt, then more strength is required. But wisdom brings success. What happens if we don't do this, if we don't take care of the blade? We risk extending the time it takes to accomplish our goals. Suddenly, things become longer. We risk frustrating ourselves by having to stop several times midway through and having to sharpen. If we don't sharpen the X, we risk decreasing enjoyment of working through the project. People become weary, worn out. Suddenly, what is a joy is a burden. Jesus said, my yoke is easy, my burden is light. Building that company should be joyful. Although there are challenges, building that company should, should energize you, should refresh you. Studying as a student should energize you and refresh you. Building a ministry should energize you and refresh you. We burn out when we neglect working on the inside. I say to you, we sharpen the blade inside out. When we neglect the inner life, the Bible says the spirit of man sustains him. It's your inner life that sustains you in time of trouble. It's in the inner life that God communes with you. It's in the inner life that God talks to you. It's the inner life that should first be fed. Sadly, most people spend all their time feeding the outer man and they neglect the inner man. And we know what happens if we neglect our relationship with Jesus Christ, he very simply said in John chapter 15, verse 4 to 6, Jesus said, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. So fruit is the result of an abiding relationship. So when people flounder through life and they struggle through life, really what they are saying is they're living as Christians disconnected from the source of wisdom. They may have knowledge, but they're not walking in wisdom. Wisdom brings success. Wisdom is the ability to do the right thing as a doctor in the operating room. When suddenly you cut and there's a lot of blood, what do I do now? 
I've got one minute to save this person's life. Wisdom. And people think the Holy Spirit is just there for the prophet or the Holy Spirit is just there for a Sunday experience. No. The word of wisdom. Insight into the future is not in Tan Sunny's teacup with leaves. It's not in Linda Goodman's book, The Stars Foretell. It's not in the horoscope. This week, you will meet somebody tall, dark, and handsome. Chances are pretty good if you live in Africa. And that week, the lady goes all week looking for a tall, dark, handsome person. <laughs> you just have to walk out your front door and you'll meet somebody tall, dark, and handsome. I read those things as well, never believed them. But there's always a measure of truth in them. This week, somebody's going to walk up to you. I've never had a week where somebody hasn't walked up to me. <laughs> this week, week, you're going to meet somebody in a strange place. I've never had a week where I've not met somebody in a strange place. Whether it's on a bus, on a train, on a corner, in a shop, behind a toll. The Bible says, as many as are led by the Spirit. Wisdom. What do you need to build your life? Wisdom. What do you need to, to raise finances? Wisdom. To raise your children today, wisdom, not knowledge. I mean, people, people read books on raising children, and some of them is as dumb as a doornail. They don't know how to apply knowledge. Little Johnny is screaming his head off, and they apply the knowledge of the Sakhalin colleges that says, no, no, no. Let him shout till he's finished. Well, the problem was with my daughter. She never stopped. So if I had to leave her to shout till she was finished, she would shout still now. So when I saw it was a tantrum, I said, come here, my little precious beauty, beauty, little beauty, beautiful thing. Wisdom, the Bible. Coochie, coochie, come, come, come on up daddy's knee. Bam, bam, bam. Daddy loves you so much, I have to inflict pain. Wisdom. Wisdom. Doing the right thing at the right time. A rugby player that loses his confidence, speaking a word in season. Wisdom. Sat with a guy recently, one of our great sportsmen, and I just looked in his eyes and I said to him, because he was doubting himself and things weren't going the way they should, so they said, please come pray. Good thing that people at least know where to go when, when the chips are down. Maybe in the good times, everybody doesn't remember you, but when the chips are down, at least they know who to phone. Or when they sit in prison, at least they know who to phone. It's a good thing. Because if sinners know where to come, it's a good thing. Uma um, come help. So I looked at him and I just said to him, you have what it takes. Don't change anything. Chill. Wisdom. Wisdom. How many opportunities do we miss because we do not apply wisdom? How many things do we not overcome because we don't take time to get wisdom? How many projects start right but never finish right because we don't walk in the principles of wisdom? And I'll show you that wisdom is not a philosophy. It's not knowledge. Wisdom is a person called Jesus Christ. So if you do not walk with Jesus Christ, you are not connected to the source of wisdom. When wisdom comes, you will know what to do. 1 John chapter 2, the Bible says in verse 20, you have an anointing and you know all things. So God wants you to know who you will marry. And if it's not the time for God to reveal to you your partner, you must be single. Thou shalt be single. Oh, that's a pitiful hand clap. I know you're still thinking of your studies. I didn't say you can't have a meal with somebody. I said, thou shalt not be single. Thou shalt be single. I'm looking for my husband. I'm looking for my wife. I'm looking for, I'm looking, I'm looking. That's your problem. You're looking. I said to a young guy this week, because he had this thing, he wants to see how many girls he can kiss. I said, you know, I understand that because you want to conquer. But there's other things God wants you to conquer. Not kissing a girl. Sis. I mean, you don't even you have immunity. Your immune system has not yet been adapted if you're not married. So you, that spit transfer that takes place, you can pick up all kind of germs and all kind of terrible things that, that come from another person's mouth. With the day you say, I do, there's a supernatural protection on you. 
Amen. I mean, but yuck. Think about it. Spit. Yes, my spit. We don't mind our children spit and if we're married, that's different, but please. <laughs> Amen. Wisdom. Wisdom. You wonder why you messed up. Wisdom. Why you're depressed, doing the wrong thing long enough. Wisdom. Wisdom brings success. Wisdom. People want to sit and they want God to come a superman like Naaman when he had his leprosy. And the prophet said, go dip in the Jordan River seven times. And Naaman said, but I, a nobleman, a man of significance. He said, but I thought the prophet would come out and he would wave his arm. I'm a man of significance. And he says, no, dip in the Jordan River. He says, that's beneath me. The little maiden, handmaiden of the Lord that's with him says, if he told you to do something great, you would do it. If it made sense, in other words. If it made sense to you. God's principles never make sense to your natural man. If you don't have regard and respect for the word of God as final authority, you are not a candidate for God's wisdom to come your way. You are not because you are disqualified. If you are wise in your own eyes, you're not open for wisdom. That's why the Bible says, be not wise in your own eyes. Because the wisdom comes through Jesus and Jesus talks to us through the word and through the spirit. If we don't have regard for the word as final authority, we are not open for wisdom. The Bible is not a menu that you can choose what you eat and what you don't eat. You're not in a restaurant this morning. You're in the house of God. The Bible says receive with meekness the engrafted word of God, which is able to save yourself. Well, I don't believe in this uh, uh, tithing. Well, I, I don't believe in this. Uh, I don't believe you have to belong to a church. Well, I, I don't believe. I don't, well, I know what the Bible says, but, but, but. Well, brother, listen very carefully. Very, very carefully. You're not a wise man. Because a wise man, Matthew 7 says, hears the word and does the word, whether it makes sense or not. So, a wise man has a submissive attitude. Before I talk about how to get wisdom, if you're not open for wisdom, you will not receive wisdom. Because the principle of wisdom requires that you hear and you obey, whether it makes sense or not. Amen. Say amen this morning. Amen. So Naaman didn't make sense, and then he obeyed. And the Bible says he dipped, 2 Kings chapter 5, in the Jordan River seven times. And his flesh became clean again. Maybe the problem in your relationship is just one word. Love her. Submit to him. Now well, my papa taught me I don't submit to nobody. <laughs> well, doll, I'm glad I'm not married to you because you're a problem. <laughs> you're like men who say, I submit to no one. <laughs> really? Yeah. You submit to no one. Jesus was under authority. Where do you come from? Are we talking about wisdom? Let's just lay a foundation here. Let's just lay a platform. Because you watch people that are out of order. They're not in a local church. They have no regard for the word of God. They have no regard for spiritual authority. And they just run around and listen to anybody. Anybody can prophesy over them. And they think it's wise. The wrong person who prophesies over you, if you open your heart, will be like a hook in your heart and will pull you out of the purpose of God. Even though they say, thus saith the Lord. Many people say, thus saith the Lord, and it's not the Lord. If it in, ain't in the Bible, it ain't the Lord, my brother and my sister. If it's not in the New and Old Testament, it's not the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care whether you had an encounter with God. Tornadoes came out of your no nose. I don't care. You can be so cool that when you walk past a Coke tin, it can freeze. I don't care what you say. You can wave your hand, you can sneeze, and the, uh, and, the, and the Red Sea can part. I'm unimpressed. Well, praise God, I pray, and the Lord showed me. Blessed be God, God showed me. Well, now tell us what the Lord showed you, brother. Well, let's let just backtrack. Are you, are you paying your bills? Oh, well, that's not the issue. No, no, no. Do you have a job? I don't have a job, but I hear God. Well, I suggest you hear God to find a job. You can also play the spiritual game out there. That's not wisdom. Wisdom is practical. Wisdom has an end result. Wisdom causes the axe to be sharper so that when you work, there's results. 
Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Wisdom does not mean you sit on your backside, you're rusty dusty, and you complain about the government, you complain about everything, but you do nothing. Wisdom says, God, show me where I can get a job. Wisdom does not dictate the terms. I'll only work if I get 20,000 rand a month. No, you start at the bottom. Say amen. Amen. Because we want God to guide us, but we don't understand how God guides us. We want things just to drop out of, out of, out of the heaven. Jesus said, I'm the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me, wisdom, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered. They gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. To wither means to shrivel, to lose energy, force, passion, freshness, sharpness. Now more strength is required. The result, the reason, the Christian is neglecting the first thing. Time in the presence of Jesus. Time in the presence of Jesus will change you totally. David said, through thy precepts, thy word, you have made me wiser than my teachers. They have knowledge, I have wisdom. I know what to do when you spend time with God. The spirit of God, the anointing, the oil on the blade, the oil on the inside. You know what to do. You have an anointing and you know you have wisdom. You don't get wisdom in a three-year degree or a seven-year degree. There are many people with financial degrees that are bankrupt today. Broke. It's the Ten Commandments. Amen. They're not clever. They might be be clever, but not wise. Huge difference. Knowledge and wisdom are worlds apart. Knowledge puffs up. You think you know what you should do. I know Pastor preaches, well, I've heard that. Are you applying it? Wisdom applies accurately what you know. So the Bible says, get wisdom, get understanding. Do not forget, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she, wisdom, will preserve you. Love her, and she, wisdom, will keep you. Wisdom is what? The principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. Where do you get wisdom? Where do you get wisdom? From a friend? No. From a book? No. From running from conference to conference? No. You can get knowledge, seven steps on how to build a business, but you will need wisdom to apply the seven steps. And that you only get from God. This is an abiding relationship. When you neglect your relationship with Jesus Christ, you will falter in life. Amen. When you disregard God's word, that is the source of wisdom. Because the principles of God are not written for the natural man, knowledge, but for the spiritual man. The natural man receives not the things of the spirit, the foolishness to him. Well, I, I, I won't forgive him. I have forgiven him seven times. Jesus said 70 times seven. Well, you don't know what he did to me. Jesus said, if you get to the altar and they remember your brother sinned against you, leave your gift, go to your brother, be reconciled. Forgive. So tough times come to all of us. You can fall down and quit, or you can fall down and look up. The Bible says when you fall down, pray. When you go through a trial, pray. Pray for what? Pray for wisdom. God, what must I do? Show me, God, and God will. Wisdom. It's never a dead end street then God must be dead and he's not. God is alive and well. The grave is empty. Jesus Christ is risen. The Holy Ghost is alive and well on planet earth. Come on. And the future belongs to us. Say amen today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let him ask for wisdom. When God came to Solomon, I have to close. He said, ask me anything. You can even ask the life of your enemies. You can ask me to wipe out all the competition in business because you think it's the competition causing you to stop flourishing. But what did he pray for? Wisdom and knowledge to govern God's people. He prays for wisdom to live his purpose. And God says, because you have not prayed for the life of your enemies, because you have not asked for riches and wealth, I will give you wisdom and knowledge. And if you study, that's why Solomon writes Proverbs about wisdom. He says, because you ask for wisdom, you will have riches and wealth. Actually, the Bible says, wisdom guarantees riches, wealth, and honor. You don't have to pray for money. You don't have to pray for honor. 
You don't have to pray for position. You pray for wisdom to understand your purpose. You serve your purpose in the kingdom of God, planted in the house of God. Then God himself will make you the head and not the tail. God will take you to the top level, what that God has designed for you. That's what wisdom will do. Wisdom will take you to the top. You might be sitting watching this program and you realize that your life is not right with the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter what your past, you can have a new beginning in life by accepting the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. All you need to do is to join Pastor Utt in the following prayer of salvation. Say thank you, Jesus, for loving me just as I am. I believe with all my heart you died for my sin. I believe you rose from the grave. I believe you are alive. I surrender my life to you. Here I am, Jesus. Take all of me. Thank you for loving me just as I am. I'm your child forever. I surrender all to you in Jesus' name.